Cool. So today's agenda. If we can get through this, all of this, um, I think that'll get you ready for the first assignment. So essentially what I'm doing is, whatever I'm going through today, I'm asking you to orate that back to me through a set of questions that I've put together in the first assignment. It's very simple. So. For the first assignment, I've got about eight questions, and so I'm giving you the answers right here, okay? So we'll start, because this is a Java course, we'll start with a little bit of Java's history. Everybody can hear me okay in the back? Right? Feel free to interrupt, ask questions whenever. Okay? After going through Java history, we're gonna get into this programming foundations, what the mindset of a programmer is supposed to think like. So I'm gonna cover computer basics. Computers that you work with every day. How is the architecture used when programs are written? How is the memory organized? And then we need to know about our bits and bytes. Base 2 to base 10 conversion and backwards. Because that's what computing is all about, actually, you see. So I've got some problems for you to um, solve without using a calculator. So you got to actually show me how these steps work. And you may already know this stuff, but it at least sets a good baseline for everybody. Then we're going to talk about programming languages. We're going to look at what is the programming language, what are the different types of programming languages, and then how have programming languages evolved in the last, well, 40 plus years? So that's what the generations refer to, okay? We're also going to compare and contrast procedural and object-oriented. Procedural generally are third generation, object-oriented are fourth generation. So we'll look into that in depth. And then we'll look at Gosling's definition of Java. Gosling is the author of the Java language. His full name is James Gosling. So we'll talk about his definition towards the end and we'll wrap for the day. If you need a break in between, when the majority raises hand, then I'll take a break, hopefully somewhere in the middle. Okay, so let me know. And if you want me to just keep going, I can go for four hours nonstop. So, this is only two, so life is good for me. So, Java. Java is supposed to be a robust programming language. I focus on the word robust because unlike other programming languages like C or C++, there can be memory leaks because in languages like C or C++, you're allowed to access the memory directly. In Java, you're not allowed to do that at all. So that makes it a robust platform for programming, which means that you create less bugs, unintentional. It's easy to use. Because, again, from the standpoint, because you're not allowed to access memory directly, that adds to the simplicity of the language. And it's very versatile, because programs written in Java run on all operating systems. You've probably heard words like Unix and Windows and Mac, Mac OS. Those are all different operating systems. So you write the program once, say, on a Windows system, you can take that to a Mac and run it without compiling the code, okay? When you write programs in other languages like C or C++, what happens? Got to create a executable or an application for that given operating system. See, that's how Microsoft is making a ton of money. You buy Microsoft Office for Windows, 
then you buy a Microsoft Office for Mac, and you pay twice. Well, now they have Microsoft Office Online, which is the third version, because you got to, now you can lease and license on an annual basis. It's a great money maker. Java includes the best aspects of programming languages that are in C and C++. You can build fairly powerful applications. Uh, a good example is Gmail. You've probably used it. Part of it is written in Java. Um, there are many applications, uh, mobile devices, that you carry um, with you. Most of, those, uh, most of those apps are also authored in Java. So this is the story. It started in 1990. A company called Sun Microsystems, which is bought by Oracle now, coined the idea of Java. Why was this language written? The original intention was to have a language that <clears throat> can be used for writing programs for microchips. That was the original intention. And it wasn't until 20 or almost 15 years later that Java came around to be used for on mobile devices. So there is a language that that the author of this language came up with. The language was called Oak. It was named after a tree outside his office on Sandal Road. So he was creating a new language. Uh, what should I call it? He looked outside his office. It was an oak tree. He says, let's call it Oak. So we developers don't spend a lot of time naming products. We're not very, we don't think too much about naming products. So these palm-sized computing devices, the microchips, we started using it for that, but one of the biggest things about the language was W-O-R-A, write once, run anywhere which means that, like I mentioned earlier, right? You write your program on a PC, but well, actually everything is a PC, so I should be careful. You write your program on a Windows machine, then you can take that executable, run it on a Mac OS, or any flavor of Unix. So this was a big deal in the early 90s, because Windows operating system was dominant at that time. More than 98% of all desktops and la um, laptops, if actually we were not even close to having laptops then, but most of the computing devices were running Windows. And the fact that Java came around was a significant threat for Microsoft, to the point actually where there was a Microsoft antitrust lawsuit. This is, I'm talking 1995. And James Gosling was invited to be a witness against Microsoft to express, uh, this was, if I can say, hosted by Department of Justice. So James Gosling became a witness and said, how this is such a big threat to the, I mean, the, the fact that Windows is the only operating system, it was monopolizing the market. And he came in to basically say that we need to get rid of this monopoly. And he talked about the features of the Java language. And if you are able to hunt that link down in the notes online, his testimony, I've given, I've given you access to his testimony. You, should, you guys should read it. It's about seven pages. 
And it's a really cool document because it explains the strengths of the Java platform. Okay? You guys get the context? Any, any question? Right? Microsoft did lose the case at that point. And uh, they were told to do certain things as they always are. So in 1994, the language became real. It was named from Oak to Java. And today, it is the most popular language used for web, mobile. And if I can even use the word cloud, what is the cloud? Anybody know? It's an external hard drive. Cloud is an external hard drive. That's another course. Let's leave, let's leave that out, right? We'll talk about cloud in another day, maybe towards the end of the quarter. So. Cloud is something you want, but don't want to pay for it. <laughs> like Gmail is in the cloud. You want it free. We don't, you, you know, if you started charging you 10 bucks a month for Gmail, would you pay? No. Because, you know, you don't want to pay. So, at that time, in 95, they said this is going to be the language for the internet. And internet was, its, was at its infancy at that time. So, some reasons and some versions, giving you, giving you an idea of, uh, you know, just around here, they finally changed the version from 1.4 to 5.0. They just got tired of, maybe we should give this some humongous upgrade numbers, so. There are a lot of release notes available online that you can read, but basically over time what's happened is the language has become a lot stable. It's got a lot of features. Um, I think I can surmise by just saying that uh, if you wanted to like build a table, in the Stone Age, you would go to the wood with your tools, cut a tree, and then shape the wood adequately and then build a table. Today, you can go to Home Depot and buy something complete with instructions and just, and just kind of uh, put, put the table together. So that's the difference in working with languages like C, versus Java. Java is like going to Home Depot and putting the table together quickly. It gives you speed for development, okay? Not in this course. You're not gonna get speed in this course because you're just learning how to use the hammer. All these basics, you see, right? But once you know, there is a wealth of predefined functionality in the language that you can just borrow to write your code. Make sense? So. so that's a little bit on the history. So let's uh, 